Please put your hands together for Ashutosh Garg, former founder, chairman, Guardian Pharmacy, Arvind Gupta, co-founder and head, Digital India Foundation as panelists, and Pankaj Bansal, co-founder and CEO, People Strong as the session chair. Pankaj, you're going to take the podium? Great. Good evening, friends. Am I audible till the end? This is a very special session, uh, and you will get to know why this is special. We call it the power of and. And we have two A's to present it. When I say A's, the Ashutosh and Arvind. Uh, the lady just introduced both of them, but I would like to just welcome them again. And uh, let you know that uh, what's, what's so special about Ashutosh, and I was asking him, how do you... How do I introduce you if I have to? He said, Pankaj, I was a professional manager, then a shopkeeper, and now a storyteller. Uh, the guy who built uh, Guardian Pharmacy, and eventually what he's doing now is sharing his learnings. Thank you so much for joining us. A big round of applause for Ashutosh. Uh, many of you, including myself, I would have liked to have Mr. Modi and interview him or have him in a debate. Um, but I don't know how feasible is it. So we thought that let's get someone who got him in 2014 elections. And we've got Arvind, the man behind the whole system, what he did. So thank you so much, Arvind, for joining in. Uh, now he's leading Digital India and many other projects across. So we have, uh, we have 40 exciting minutes ahead. Uh, they will become exciting when you participate. First few minutes, we're going to just warm up a bit where both the speakers are going to speak up. And uh, I know some people said 40 minutes is less, but I said, yeah, this is a Twitter world. And I love Urdu poetry. So a poet said that, Ab to utni bhi nahi, main khane mein jitni diya karte the, hum mein. <laughs> right? So this is reality. So that's the reality of time. We all have limited time, much lesser and lesser. Every conference, and Esther and People Matters team is very good at it to get the best out of the crunch time that we have. Uh, so friends, with, with these both speakers, with this wonderful session ahead, talking of HR tech, work tech, people tech, uh, what is this power of and? And uh, we were discussing and debating. Nowadays, people say, that, okay, we are making an investment in technology. So we ask people, why do you do that? So some people say that's a cost of doing business. But there are people who say, we want to find the new frontiers for our business. Am I right? Sometimes you think it's just a cost for doing business. And some people look at it, we will bring in new frontiers to do the business. I don't know how many of you attended the session of Holger Mueller, which was a master class. And he was explaining the difference. But I'm not going to explain. But I believe that, and I hope that all of us will look at it on the second part, which is, can you build the new frontiers of business? And then comes the question of the current technology systems that we have. Uh, so Ashutosh and Arvind, most of the time when HR technology is discussed, people question why it is not complete people technology, why HR technology is restricted to HR processes and systems. But when a meeting happens, why I can't see HR technology? Why can't it be people tech? And you know, there are a lot of funny researches. I'm sure the one which at least has resonated with me a lot may have resonated with you. People were asked the question, how do you, how do you share the experience of your status review meetings? 50% said, we will do anything other than that status review meeting. About 27% said that I'm OK to watch a paint dry up on the wall than being a part of the meeting. And 9% said, who were the brave ones, that I'm OK to get a root canal done than being a part of that meeting. <laughs> So if that is the situation of the work life that happens, then why can't we think of HR tech as a people tech, where the messenger systems, where the email systems, where the meeting systems are going to transform the way they work? I think this is the agenda and the challenge we had. So we requested these both speakers. Can you share your views and throw light on the power of and means can we have experience and productivity together? Am I right in saying when you get one, you compromise on the other most of the times, at least in B2B context? Sometimes you get the productivity right, but then the experience is compromised. Sometimes you get the experience right, but the productivity is compromised. So we have not been able to build the Ubers of the world in the B2B context. So friends, with this, I'm going to open up to my panelists. We'll have two sessions. You must be wondering why these two orange boxes. They've got some stress balls uh, in the second part of the conversation. We are going to ask them, what are you going to treasure, and what are you going to trash? So whatever they're going to trash, they're going to put the ball in the box. So you will know how many balls, or what are the ideas they're trashing. But before we go there, I would love to hear from you. And, Where are we uh, getting ideas from? So ideas you are going to give, and audience are going to give. We will make the session as interactive as possible. Okay. We don't have detailed dialogue. We'll have quick 
comments, but the opening comments from you, Arvind, to begin with, and then Ashutosh, over to you, on this question of power of and. Yeah, we can start with ideas. I have technology connected. <laughs> so um, first, I request to close the door in the back. It's a lot of disturbance. If anybody at the back, can you just close, shut the door down, please? Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Pankaj, and uh, thank you for having me here. It's a, um, uh, you know, I just did a, a small session in the other room. And when, when Pankaj and uh, Esther asked me to be on this panel with the pow uh, on the power of and, it's very interesting. Uh, you talked about 2014. The real story is 2019, and I'll come to that. Because 2014, uh, we were, I was running uh, the, the digital part, the tech part of the campaign. And we were an opposition party, and we came into power from opposition. Easier to field and uh, try to get the opposition, you know, the main party out, the batting party out. Uh, when we were batting, which is 2019, that's where the power of and has come in. And I can explain, uh, ex and, and, and that is one part of the experience. The second part of the experience, I'm an electronics engineer by training. At least I've studied. My degree says so. And it's all about and, and transistors. It's, it's all and, and I've always talked about this. When we were, you know, so I am one of the few, and I, that's the reason I've been, I think, asked to speak over here is that I've traversed all possible things that I think, professor, academician, uh, you know, tech entrepreneur, Silicon Valley, tech entrepreneur, India, tech entrepreneur inside the government, most difficult job ever done. Okay, to do something. And that's where the power of and came into play. Because in the government, when I, when I was appointed inside the government, uh, the biggest challenge is you have this people. Do you have a choice? Can you change most of the government? And I'm putting it double quotes. And as you know, the answer is no. That's it, it's decided. But you have a CEO who's the prime minister, who wants you to deliver not one, but 100x. So your employee base is the same, the same set of people. And you're now being asked as a CEO to run a startup. I call it a startup always. And, and when Pankaj asked me this question, that more with less, or less with something else, I, I, I'm confused. But I said one thing. Doing same with less, or doing more with same? More with same. The, the, the rule has been always more and more and more with the same set of people. And what we found out, and at least my experience says, that less was not a choice. We had to deliver a lot more with the same. And we did. The 2014 to 19, and what my experience with MyGov, with Digital India has been, that the same set of people, absolutely the same set of people, have delivered Things that you can are total world scale, whether you call it the unified payments interface or you call it the digi locker of the government of India or you call MyGov, which is the most uh, biggest citizen centric uh, platform of the world. Same set of people, not a single person changed, and we delivered a lot more. It was driven by leadership, it was driven by inspiration, it was driven by, driven by the desire to make a change. So when the leadership and the ducks got aligned, I think we delivered. And, and what the CEO did was to appoint an, a, a good entrepreneur, like me, I'm, I'm calling myself good also, so please note that, uh, in, in, in the system of the government to disrupt it. And we did. So, and that's been the focus, you know, the learning from the biggest business on the planet, government. Government is the biggest business on the planet. Right? I mean, if you see, you count all your companies together, add the manpower, the human resources, man, women, whatever power, all of it together, one PSU of Government of India will be more than that. Yeah, indeed. So workforce is the big thing. So uh, uh, before I move to Ashutosh, I the question from you. The, 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 yeah, let sure. me just complete that sure, thought. Sure. If this elephant can move and make a difference, with the same set of people, anybody can change. Yeah. And That's we can right. deliver a lot more with the same set of people, right vision, light leadership, and recognition that every role counts. 
and that's been my lesson. So, so what Arvind is saying, elephants can dance, and that's what he means to we say. We made them dance. Yeah, you made them dance. So, Arvind, I'm very intrigued that, of course, you help governments to win elections, but what do you do other than that? If you deliver... So in between, in between those elections. Well, I, I, I mean, you, you build, it's from, from delivery to elections. It's not just elections. That's what I said. From 2014 to 19, the Modi government got returned, and it's a, it's a forget politics in it, forget everything else, because expectations product got delivered. You say employee experience. Citizens experienced a better uh, change. Uh, they just experienced change, and if you can deliver that change, things will happen, and, and it's not a one-day process. So he's saying it's all about users, it's all about user experience, friends. Thank you so much for this wonderful start, and we, we come to Ashutosh. Ashutosh would love to hear from you, your experiences. Thank you, Bankaj. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Esther, for inviting me. You know, I met Arvind uh, just half an hour ago, and it's very interesting. He's speaking about the experience of uh, Mr. Modi and uh, people in India, and I've lived in Singapore for almost 10 years, and Independently, I had said I'm going to speak about my experiences of how a government can move people. I'm not an HR person, and it would be presumptuous of me in front of so many HR people to say I know everything about HR, but I can certainly share experiences. So in, in, in 1965, when in, uh, Singapore got independent, Lee Kuan Yew, the founder of uh, Singapore, said two things to his parliamentarians. Number one, he said the world Singaporeans must realize the world does not owe us a living. And number two, he said, Singaporeans must understand that planning for their generation for better or for worse has been done, and we have to plan for the next generation. I think these two sentences need to be recognized and understood by all our organizations, by all our people, because unfortunately, in the Indian and international companies that I worked, I worked for only three companies with ITC, Lockheed and Hughes um, in uh, very senior positions. And uh, unfortunately, what happens with all of us as senior people is that we start thinking of what's going to happen to me, mera kya hoga. And uh, that is where our biggest challenges start to come. How do we determine uh, you know, what will happen with productivity? How do we determine what will happen with uh, the employee experience? Do we need to bring in technology into enhancing ex employee experience? Do we want to say that uh, technology is only an enabler for employee experience? And unless our employees are motivated enough and they have the right attitudes, will we be able to get the higher level of productivity? I think I'm going to stop there because I'm looking at the timer. But I think we, I'm, I'm looking forward to some engaging discussion on each of these points. Thank you. So this is interesting. Friends, you, you can start raising your hands if you have questions. Um, you're asking something, ma'am? Oh, you can't hear at the you back. You have to close the door. We uh, can't can, even we, hear. can we request to close the door, please? Uh, can we request both the doors, please? All right. Is it better, ma'am? All right, thank you. So if you have questions, please raise your hand. We have volunteers here who will make sure that the mics will reach you. Uh, but by the time those questions come up, um, Arvind, in your context or in your experience, Ashutosh, you've really seen other than large enterprises looking for true productivity strategies or it's a spray and pray kind of a situation. People just deploy something and they expect some miracle to happen. I, um, uh, Pankaj, apart, as I said, I'm one of the few who has experience in the private sector and I continue to serve on boards of India's biggest companies. And uh, I'll tell you, the belt, I mean, and this you will keep hearing from many people. I'm the youngest on this board, by the way, uh, LNT, Larson Tobro. Uh, and uh, I see a refreshing thinking in many boards in India. Uh, and the question you ask, is it spray and pray? I hope not. I really pray it's not spraying and hoping to get something working. I think boards have recognized the power of uh, having a very targeted program. And you're talking about tech. Larson & Tubro, and I, I'm, I don't talk for Larson & Tubro, I'm seeing this as an experience, is that they, you know, they, companies like this, which are big infrastructure engineering players, are recognizing that they, of course, need as much technology into their processes, but also to enable their employees for their safety, for their productivity. Uh, without that, they won't succeed in what is called the LNT Next, for example. So, uh, and it's board-driven. 
So I'm seeing a lot of uh, you know, top-down approach, and if it's spray and pray, some departmental approach, that's siloed. It won't work. All right. What's your view, Ashutosh? Well, I think uh, over the years, I have seen organizations change dramatically uh, in terms of how uh, the entire employee experience has been talked about and what kind of inputs are being given. And I have, I have a colleague, former colleague from ITC sitting here, but just to give you an example, in 1979, after my MBA, when I joined ITC, I went to then, uh, the then HR head. And uh, after an MBA, he spent five minutes with me. I thought I'm going to be interviewed for a lot of things. And he says, you know, ask me a little bit, few questions. And he said, I think you'll fit into the culture of ITC. Now, that was an amazing experience to be able to say, here is a fitment that you're being looked at. In those days, we used to call it the covenanted carders, which you'd fit into. That is now beginning to change, and that is now beginning to be evolved into a whole set of parameters which are able to determine how employees will be able to fit in and how their productivity will be, me will be measured. So I, I saw Pradnya has a question. Is there a mic here? And we have one question there. I'll come back to the rest. Uh, so one is Pradnya and one is at the last row. I guess there's a gentleman. I can't see him. Quick Hi. one, Pradnya. Hi. Hi, Ashutosh and uh, Arvind. Is, uh, one of the polarities that uh, we are talking about here is experience and productivity. productivity. I think as leaders, we are constantly balancing many polarities, right? The one I'd love to hear from your experience or yours is uh, how do you balance stability? I mean, is there the and between stable and disruption? Stability and disruption. So she's saying, is it and or or? So your quick views. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, think it, I think it's and. I mean, you know, uh, disruption has become a norm, irrespective of which business you are in. You know, uh, we've had so many instances of disruption, whether it's an Amazon happening or whether it's uh, something happening in, in, in any other kind of retail chains or in technology or in OYO or whatever else. And it's only a matter of time because before these giants are disrupted again because people are continuously looking at doing something different. And yet disruption has to uh, happen with a, a motivated set of employees who will be able to carry through the ideas of the disruptor. So therefore, these two have to work together. So I would say AND is a very strong. Uh, so in, in 1973, right. Pradnaya, the average age of an S&P comp S&P 500, Standard & Poor 500 company, was 73 years. In 2000, it was about uh, 23 years, if I'm not wrong. And 2013, it's 10 years. So I think this and is working, whether we like it or not, correct? That's the pace at which change is happening. If you're liking what's happening, you can tweet on Pankaj Bansal PB. If you're not liking our old rule, write to Esther Martinez. But, right? <laughs> Pankaj, so, can sorry. I add to what she said and what Ashutosh said? You know, uh, while all this is great, um, there, is, and the, the, there is what is happening is the, the companies which are only looking at stability are going away. But there are G's, there are IBM's, there is L&T, there is Bechtel's, there is the Brooker Motor Company still surviving. So I think the answer lies in the end and in the way that what I see it is there are pure disruptors who are playing a disruption game, the OYOs, the Ubers, the Olas, whatever you call them. But there are companies which have recognized that this is important. So they're paying a vertical called stability and they have a horizontal called disruption. And stability is getting them the business, the bread and butter, and the disruption is preparing them for the next gen. And that's the way I look at it. So wonderful. So we will take one more question, and before we move to the second part, the gentleman at the end, I think he's, he was the first one to raise the hand. If you have a loud voice, you can try. Uh, otherwise, the mic is can, reaching. Can I you. vote out this big mic, first of all? Why is the mic so big? Yeah, this, will be, this will just, after this uh, Yeah, no, no, I'm round. voting it out first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Eh? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Ask the question. Is, is that gentleman there? Yeah. In the end. Go ahead. Go ahead. You have to supposed to throw them there. Oh, that's the reason. Okay. Bad throw. No worries. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Please yeah. go ahead. So uh, we're talking about disruption, and and that is uh, also we we talked about startups which are which are growing at at lifts and bounds through scale. Now, when that comes to, uh, there, are, there are operational challenges from a business standpoint that, that comes along with scale. But how does that translate into employee experience so that the, the, the employees don't feel 
uh, overwhelmed by the change that's coming and still are able to maintain the sanity and... and so our friend is uh, asking a question that this crazy growth that's happening is employees taken for granted there, right? So he's saying in this whole race of productivity and, uh, and achieving more, uh, the employee is becoming more and more insignificant. Am I right? Have I interpreted yes. the question right? So that's the question he's asking. What's your view on this? Okay, so... Um, you saw in Guardian, so would love to hear that. Sorry? I said you, you, you've done that in Guardian. So, no, how, so, how you so let, me, let me try and answer this question. I think, you know, uh, what I said right in the beginning, what, what the former Prime Minister said, Lee Kuan Yew, that, you know, uh, nobody owes anybody a living. I think every employee today has to recognize that he or she is in a very, very fast-changing environment. And if they do not keep pace, they will get obsolete or obsolescence will catch up. Then to sit back and say that why is change making me obsolete is unfair. The responsibility is on each one of us. I'm 62 and I'm still excited about everything that is happening in the world and I keep on doing very, very different things. But if we do not disrupt ourselves first and get prepared for the changes that are coming, then I'm afraid we will get disrupted out of our own organizations. So don't fall in love with what you're doing. Keep reinventing. So Galib said, Ishq ne nikamma kar diya Galib, varna aadmi hum bhi kaam ke the. Right? So if you don't keep learning, that's what he's saying. Any, any quick views on this, Arvind? See, I think uh, what Asutra is saying is very valid. But on the other hand, you have to get every employee buy into this. They have to understand what's in it for them. That's the way to look at it. I, I mean, a, a shop floor worker, that's an employee, very important employee, probably running a, a million dollar gate, JCB please? crane. Sorry. Right? Can we close the gate, please? Can I request to close the gate, please? You know, a, a construction site worker, a site uh, engineer, foreman, whatever, they have instruments uh, which are millions of dollars of, uh, more than that. And uh, today, suddenly, next day, you tell them that, you know, you, you need to understand and use this VR machine and this VR is going to train you how to use it, and that's it. This is your training. You're done. He or she asks, hey, you know, what if I don't understand this? And what if I have a problem? Who's going to tell me that? No, 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 this is disruption. You're supposed to use this. Now, how do you take that? And the view I have is technology is important. And in the previous session that I did, what we have learned is that people buy into your vision as a leadership if you tell them what's in it for them. I gave an example, the senior citizens, the senior most citizens of this country, themselves queued up and enrolled for a scheme called Jeevan Pranam, giving proof of life. Because instead of going to a government office, spending a day going, day coming back, bribery, corruption, you know, they could now give a proof of life to get their pension every six to 12 months on, on a thumb impression. So what I, what I they hear... They learned technology in a day. Because it made their life better. So what I, what I hear him, he's saying that if the experience is right, automatically productivity come. On, on the other hand, what I hear Ashutosh saying is that productivity is the responsibility of employee, so you better buckle up. So, so this is a polarity we hear from two of you. I'm glad we don't have the third speaker. But uh, within two of you, this is the answer that has come. So friends... Uh, uh, every question, every session, we've been given this feedback that we don't get enough time with audience and speakers. So that's what we're trying to enable. Uh, by the time I move to the next round, if any of you want to share a very quick anecdote, anything which is humorous on how you calculate productivity, not a very serious answer. Give us a humorous answer that you have seen somebody giving a very, very funny explanation of productivity. Please raise your hand. We'll come back to you. So by the um, oh, so Abhijit started. I was moving to the next question. But yeah, please give it to Abhijit. So with that, with that definition, we should ban all the phones and gadgets in the office. <laughs> and the emails. Unbelievable. But, but this is true. I can't name the customer if I'm guessing it right. Uh, the first question they asked a housing company, that uh, if we deploy the system where people have access to this app, will they waste a lot of time in collaboration with each other? What we call collaboration in HR, they were worried that that's the time waste. So I, I hear that. Wonderful Is example. Is WhatsApp included in that? Sorry? In social media, they're, they're, they're fighting a one-sided war. Mm. <laughs> so, yes, quick. Uh, sorry, the, sorry, what's the point? So he's from Amazon. 
so it's it's very interesting to hear his view yes go ahead okay so he's saying that uh, a parameter of productivity is maximum people are operating from home so we it's the reverse happening earlier people wanted you to be in office for late hours now people are saying if you're not using office infra we are better off so it's a it's a different world that we are witnessing so if you have to both trash or uh, treasure what is that you're going to trash in this whole journey of power of and right the experience and productivity what is that you're going to trash and what is that you're going to treasure ashutosh you go ahead i give you the the ball so i think you're starting from a trash you can start from so don't worry about the balls they are they are the trash all over so i guess one of the things i would really trash is uh, you know all these so called accompaniments that go along with building you know my experience i am this i think what is relevant to me today is what is uh, needed for the job today rather than this is what i did in the past and uh, so many of us keep living that you know i achieved this therefore i should get credit for something that i'm supposed to be doing so i would trash uh, a lot of the so called baggage we bring into our uh, into our lives so so well said but that brings all the top management team members at risk because because i agree i agree absolutely almost, almost saying there is no sense of entitlement absolutely so uh, so but it's all right we are assuming there are not many senior management members here um so would love to hear from you what is that you're going to trash arvind and what's going to yeah, trash? yeah uh, my life i have trashed one thing and i would love to continue trashing that is chalta hai ah yeah so he's coming back to productivity is saying nothing chalta hai wow. right and uh, i think that's been the lesson uh, you can keep thinking chalta hai and nothing will change but you can look at the problem try to solve it differently and it will happen so 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 i'm going to ask you to a show of hands how many of you think when we talking of trash and treasure that you buy the technologies be it hr be it work be it people for users or for yourself when i say yourself assume you are buyers right you are buyers so is it hr technology or people technology or workforce technologies bought for buyers or users those who say buyers raise hand oh 99% are saying okay let me reverse the question uh, how many of you think te these technologies are bought for users so the rest of others are buying for i don't know who so there are about 15 people who say 15% people who said that they buy it for users uh, probably 2 3% said that they are buying it for uh, for themselves or hr departments nothing wrong in it but what is your opinion when when these technologies are bought and when experience and productivity is so important who who should be it be bought for the hr department to run the department well or the employees who are going to use it to run their lives well well it depends on what uh, you are buying i mean if it is to run a good payroll then it's for the hr department but if you are buying it for employee productivity then it's the employees who must understand what it's all about Very there is well no said. point in saying that i've got a great system which the hr people and the hr specialists know about but rest of the organization suck it up absolutely brilliant point uh, arvind what's your opinion i have a very contrary opinion on this no go ahead please go ahead when i was walking in a excellent uh, exhibition outside i saw very interesting slogans i don't know which companies they are and disclaimer i have no plus or minus for those companies <laughs> says technology for humans <laughs> i'm scared now and you are asking this question i mean the hr department does not exist if there is no humans so what i don't know what is this question whether the department buys it for themselves it's like you know i am doing office party but i'll decide what the menu is right i mean not the people of the organization i think if we have that approach we are doomed i mean there is no there is no two ways about it so writing is in the wall and i keep saying that probably what i am hearing from both of them and and uh, i think ashutosh answered it beautifully from a different context he said what are you buying if it is payroll administrative processes yes hr department otherwise for buyers and what but that when this that saying, era is gone pankaj yeah of course and what i mean if we are still debating that i buy payroll for an hr department yeah. i think we are in a wrong room over here let's be frank i mean you're talking about disruption where are any processes which are i am buying for myself so wonderful i mean, i have worked at the biggest organizations in in the valley which are now making all these service nows that you see outside i have worked with all of them salesforce service now mark benioff i you know I, I, any organization which is thinking that i'm making a payroll software 
does not exist anymore. So it's, it's wonderful he says that. He's pushing us to open the can of worms. Be ready for your questions. So let me tell you, 99% people I'm assuming, and you will support me when I say this, we do not conduct even a net promoter score on the technology being used by employees. Am I right? At best, we use only our own satisfaction that how technology is working. Never ask employees. So if HR department is unhappy, technology is bad. If HR department is happy, technology is good, right? So that's the real state, but we hear you, Arvind, and that point is taken. Would love to get questions from audience. We have about eight minutes left. So I'm cognizant of that. I'm cutting a few questions. Yes, ma'am. Second row, the lady there. Ma'am, you can briefly introduce yourself and ask the question. Sure. Hi, uh, this is Suchita Chahal from Publicis CPN. And Arvind, my question is specifically for you. I'm from the learning department. And in this age of digital business transformation, the change, all these things, uh, the challenges that we see most of all is that the leadership who are deciding the kind of business language the organization is going to speak versus those who are going to implement it on the ground level, there's kind of a gap between them. By the time the message percolates to like, you know, all those who are actually going to implement it, the leadership has moved on to something else. Because something else has been, like, you know, uh, is seen on the horizon and they can see that as the next big move. In your case, because you had such a huge Herculean task with such a huge manpower, how did you manage to percolate that kind of message from leadership till the bottom in such a short span of time? Wonderful question. So what, what lady is asking is, she's added the third dimension. We were talking of buyer and user. Now she's saying within buyer, there is a senior management and, and the people who are to implement it. So she's asking your opinion, Arvind, how did you manage such a massive transformation? How many computer science uh, people in this room? People who, anybody who studied computer science? We, I have promoted, well, very good, thank you very much, you're my community. Uh, uh, this is, I have, The rest of you belong to us. Uh, it's a tech community, okay? Uh, I, I uh, you know, we have believed in something, and I've talked a lot about this, what is called divide and conquer algorithm. This is the reason I asked the computer science. It's an algorithm in computer science called divide and conquer. Right? You divide a big problem into smaller problems and solve it. Now, the question is very pertinent. You are, you know, whichever company that you said you represent, I am talking about the government. Our target is starts with 10 million plus people to be trained. Right now, we have a target of digital literacy of 50 million families to be trained. Okay? It's not like a couple of hundred thousand. It's 50 million families to be trained. Now, what do we do? If by the time you know, uh, we start and doing the standard process, and it comes down to training 50 million technology would have changed five times in that. I'm done. I'm teaching them how to use uh, XYZ software, and everybody is using some cloud software, right? For example, what we have used, and it's worked wonderfully, and to, to answer your question is divide and conquer. Divide and conquer is make this big problem, solve it into smaller pieces, and these smaller pieces, these people are empowered at the same time. So what did we do for a big digital literacy project? Injuring students. Two million injuring students. There are about four million injuring students at one point in time in any college. Give them an incentive. Every person you train, 100 bucks. Train them. And massive outreach to these two million people at one go. Now they are going out and training 10, 10 people each. 20 million people trained. Isn't it fascinating what government has done at a macro level, Arvind? This can be so well and beautifully implemented at the corporation level, but becomes harder and harder because of the challenge that this lady... And this context is... Pankaj, the only thing is somebody has to think out of the box. Yeah, but she, the question she asked is the problem she's saying. She comes from Publicis Siplis, Sapient, which is a company which went into a major merger globally, right, since I know the context. So things just changes. And you said people have to be on a... It's very hard in these contexts, but I think point is extremely well made. Uh, this is a beautiful answer. Any other question before we... Yes, ma'am. Quick ones, ma'am. Go ahead. We have five minutes left. If I could continue a little sure. bit on that thought, sure. and we can have sure. an offline discussion. See, the thing is, if you do a waterfall model, which means leader, senior management, yeah, yeah. middle management, by the time the leader comes in, it's waterfall. Cut, 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 cut. By the time it reaches, it's... You know, the, then, then again, that waterfall is repeated, something like... Water model is old. Direct. And S together. So That's Arvind, the message I was trying so to give, Arvind, nothing else. In HR world, we are used to for some lingo which I'll translate. What he's saying is, uh, use cohorts. 
You use cohorts for your employee satisfaction. He's saying do it like that. Waterfall means it'll take three minutes to come down. When you kill the waterfall and directly talk to a cohort, Absolutely. it just thank kills you. it. That's what he's saying, right? Thank you. Uh, thank uh, you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Arvind. My question to you uh, is, I'm Kalpana. I'm from Lindstrom. This is a Finnish multinational. So uh, in 2014, I think, as you rightly mentioned, that it might have been still a little easy. But in 2019, it, everyone would accept that it might be a little difficult for the uh, present government. So what did you do differently with the same sort of people whom you were training in 2014 and then you sat with them for the present campaign in 2019? What went differently in hence, your mind? Hence proven, employees are not as important as politics. <laughs> so, but anyway, we will, we will honor this question. Uh, Arvind, quick answer from you. Quick answer is delivery. You deliver on expectations, on experience. You have a, the session is called Managing Productivity and Employee Experience. The say, I said in Delhi, and I live in Delhi, only, only a few set of 500 people changed. The whole government, which is another million people, was the same. Leadership change, vision change, and the delivery mechanism, this elephant moved and delivered. So the delivery, if it, the, what do you call employee experience, I call citizen experience. We change the citizen experience. That's what we did. So he's coming back to experience, and I think that's going to be the winner. Yes, ma'am. I told you employees are not as important. You don't listen to me. These are employees of the country. Yeah, I know, sir. This so, is more important than anything else. So I just have a quick question. So it comes back to the basic aspect of productivity, which is being on your seat on time, I guess. So, no, it's a wonderful question because when she asks, it is true this challenge is faced every day in corporations. There are enough people, especially from manufacturing, who still comes and say, I don't know what you, so I can't Something name all. But the Amazon guy said, work from home. <laughs> Yeah, so that's not a manufacturing setup. One of the largest auto companies came up and still people were taking prints of emails and answering. This is true. This is, I think, last uh, HR tech that I have HR a confidential head. agreement. I can't answer that question, uh, but I'll tell you hurry, funny stories offline. Uh, people so, do it all the time. Right. Hmm. So, so what's, what's your view on the question that the lady asked? Do, do you Ashutosh. have any view, Ashutosh, that when people answer, when people ask questions, uh, on getting people on time, etc. Is it relevant anymore? Well, I think I think you didn't mention it, but I'm I'm a little surprised that you know we still measure uh, employee productivity if the if the individual is sitting on his or her seat. I mean, you know, all over the world, this is changing dramatically, and people are moving away from sitting in the same seat or or, or we're working out of the same works workspace. So I I disagree with this whole concept that if. Only if you're present in an office, and maybe it works differently for the government because they've got a different set of parameters, but certainly in the corporate sector, I don't see this as an, as an issue. No, so, but let so me let answer me, that. Yeah, with, before you with, answer, just one sec. I, I just let me just ask Ashutosh one thing. Ashutosh, you know, and again, please show me hand. Be candid. No one is judging you. I'll come to you, sir, after the ma'am. Uh, still, HR measures transaction inputs or transaction metrics than impact. Is that correct? Is that correct? So see, uh, Ashutosh, I agree with you, but this is the reality. We live in a situation still where HR departments, we are forced because even CEOs are asking for transactional metrics. People are still asking, is payroll correct, completely delivered? They're not asking, are employees happy with the whole experience of getting salary and the way it's dispersed? So you know, somewhere I think what has happened is that employee, employees have started linking expectations and rights yeah. to where they are working. And let me again go back uh, to my first company, which was ITC. 1979, 80, 81, when I was transferred to Calcutta, we had no concept of attendance. We had no concept of sick leave. We had no concept of casual leave. If you were sick, you were sick. Sure. If you wanted to take a day off, you took a day off. And yet, when I founded Guardian, it, I, I started off by saying, don't worry, you can, if you're unwell, you're unwell. And we suddenly started to see how much that was misused. Got it, got it, got it. Point taken. Uh, you were saying something, Arvind? No, no I, I say what when the, the gentleman from Amazon was saying that, you know, they are experiencing, uh, and I assume what they are saying is they're assuming that attendance, really, physical presence does not count as long as your productivity is important, right? I mean, as long as you're giving the output, really doesn't matter where you are, how much do you work, don't work, right? I mean, and I think what that lady says, I'm just, you know, jada the two, while what you hear in media, 
and I'm, that's why I'm putting a disclaimer, is that there is an attendance and there is all of this. Let me assure you, it's both good and bad. The media. <laughs> all right, we got the answer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Quick one, ma'am. We have three minutes. And, uh, experience, right? It's not really an organization attribute. Like I've seen, it's really between the teams and the people who are leading those teams, right? In the same organization, you would have team where work from home is absolutely fabulous, you know, and it's absolutely all right. While so you are getting after the manager, you know, it's the manager is the biggest problem. And so it yeah, is, it is true. Yes, yeah, I've seen yeah, that. That yeah. you know, it is, it is how the so, leader. So what's drives. the question? Po point taken. What's the question? Yeah, no, that that was a comment. Oh, that's what, what a comment. comment. Yeah. Wonderful. So the lady saying uh, the 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 gentleman. Yes, get up, sir, and we have just two minutes left. So what she's saying is there's another element or a layer. We are not empowering employees. That's why managers are becoming powerful. I'm not anti-manager. Please don't get it that way. I have a lot of my colleague managers who are here. But uh, that's, that's what she's saying. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Is it working? Okay. Yes, it's working. My name is Manish. I run the career center at Ashoka University. Wonderful. These two people right now sitting here, one is from the corporate and one is from the government, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we learn really from each other? Because their audience are completely different. I, my, my friend, I have worked more in corporate and tech startups than I have worked in government. I, I agree that. I'm saying I'm, why I'm just saying that. Is, Let me put a disclaimer first of all. Yeah. Why yeah. I'm saying can we learn from each other? Both it's the power of and. The session is Definitely. about and. I still work in the corporate sector. Definitely. <laughs> I'm saying because the corporate culture learns from the... Yeah. Learn from the best best practices of the Western world. So, A for Apple. So, but so, so the what's the question? Indian, yeah. What's so it? the corporate culture learns from the A for Apple thing from the Western culture. Okay. So everything is derived from their best practices. While the government is based on the like, what did you say? HR. What did you say? Everything is derived from the Western world. I mean, most researches that we refer oh, to no, are no, from no, the no, Western no. I am Western totally disagreeing. I am not hearing this, what you're saying, okay? So. Okay, quickly put your question. So I am just thinking, how do we match this learning? Because corporate, the way everything happens. So it's a unique welfare. situation, my friend. Thank you. I got. So he's saying that corporate should learn from government and government should learn from corporate. It's, it's one of the rare forums where I have seen, at least I'm getting uh, inspired that corporations can learn from government, isn't it? Most of the time it's the other way around. So it's a compliment to you, Arvind, and that's what the audience are saying. Uh, but friends, we can take one last question and then we'll close. Is that okay, ma'am? One last question for the lady there that I see. Uh, yes, ma'am, get up and you can ask the question. Wow, oh, we are good cricketers. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh so here, so I heard some contradictory views in the discussion, so just wanted to clear things for my own uh, self. So we said that we cannot, uh, you know, uh, put one solution for everything, but at the same time, uh, the panel seems surprised when they say that there is a fixed timing a culture or a attendance culture, but coming from a manufacturing sector, when you have, uh, you know, blue collar workforce working in shifts, what if an issue happens? If you're working from home, you cannot come, you know, in, you know, like five seconds and, you know, clear that issue. So, so what's really, the question? So I'm only trying to say that when you say that you cannot have one solution for different problems, then why are we getting surprised by having the attendance or the fixed timing culture? I mean, it can, it can work for other organizations and other So sectors. yeah, I think there is a power of hand, there is a complete uh, agreement on the speakers. We are not saying that you have to allow people to work from home or you have to tell them to come on time. This was just examples being discussed. I think there is no debate on that. Okay. Fully. It again depends on the cohort, what's your business line Perfect. is. Friends, I would have wished that we can continue a long debate around this. Um, uh, you know, so but, but I think the lady is there. We are, our time is up. We've had fantastic conversations. And uh, so I think <laughs> next year again we will meet and uh, come back for the next year. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Arvind. Thank you, Ashtosh. A big round of applause for both of them. Back to you. And also a big round of applause to Pankaj. Okay. Oh.